433 MHz devices are used everywhere because they are cheap and easy to use. In this video I will build a affordable gateway which transfers 433 MHz messages via Wi-Fi to our MQTT broker. The device uses an Arduino Mega and an old ESP01 module. Then I connect my new Chinese weather station to this gateway and through some node red porn, yes, get the data neatly on a browser screen. It also can be used to steer all sorts of other devices. Buckle up, it will be a tough drive, especially the node red, which is not mandatory. Ritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. When I used SDR radio to hack my weather station in video number 209, viewers suggested a more straightforward way. Use a software called RF Link, which decodes many devices out of the box. I looked at it and really it supports my weather station. But it also has one disadvantage. It is closed source and it only runs on an Arduino Mega. Bad luck for me because Megas do not offer Wi-Fi, are expensive and big. And I would have loved to have an ESP8266 or an ESP32 version of this software. So I had to find another solution. Others directly connected the Mega via serial to a Raspberry Pi running Node-RED. I do not like this setup because my Raspberry Pi is sitting in the cellar behind my monitors and my weather station is too far away near the roof of the house. And anyway, I want that my newly built gateway is also usable for other devices. So it has to be as all antennas as high as possible. The specifications of our device therefore are it has to listen to all 433 MHz devices in my household and in addition to the devices of my neighbors of course. It has to transfer all 333 MHz messages via MQTT to my broker. It has to be as cheap as possible. Also I want to display the actual weather situation in my browser. This summer we had nearly no rain. This is why I want a history of the rainfall over the last few hours, days and weeks. Next year I could use this information to trigger my happy wife button of video number 185 to water the lawn after a time without rain and lots of sun. So not only the grass would be happy. Let's start with the gateway. We need a 433 MHz receiver. You get many of them, not all are good. According to the internet, this one seems to be okay. So let's use this one. I also bought a few small antennas for these modules. Next, we go to the homepage of RF-Link. This project offers a loader and a binary file for an Arduino Mega. For this project, the Mega is too big. This is why I recently bought smaller boards, which behave like an Arduino Mega, but are much smaller. Unfortunately, they are not cheaper. Next, we build a breadboard prototype using these parts. For the prototype, I use a regular Arduino Mega because of its DuPont connectors. I could also connect a 433 MHz transmitter, but so far I have no experience with it and for the moment I will not do it. Now we can do some tests. Because the weather station is too far away from my lab, I try some other sensors. This temperature sensor works and this door sensor too. This doorbell button is not recognized as well as this door sensor from Banggood. We see the list of supported sensors is long, but still we find unsupported devices. Next we need MQTT and Wi-Fi. I could use a standard Wemos ESP8266 board for that purpose. But this is too big and too expensive for me. I still have a few unused ESP01 with small flash memories in my box. These should be enough to convert serial signals to MQTT. For my development work, 
I use a standard ESP board. The sketch is based on the example sketch from the PubSub library. As usual, you find the link in the description. Its serial speed is set to 57600 baud because RF Link uses this speed as an output. If I switch everything on, my prototype works and I get MQTT messages in Node-RED. As you see, I transfer the whole 433 MHz message as one MQTT string and do the analysis in Node-RED. As we will later see, this is a good decision. Now we only have to remember how to program the small ESP01 boards. I use the most straightforward method available. Two 4-pin empty shells glued together with a little superglue. Then I crimp and insert the needed wires. Because I will use this socket only for programming, I can strap GPIO0 directly to ground and leave reset open. Like that, the inserted ESP01 module always go into flash mode as soon as it boots. I connect ground, VCC, TX and RX to an FTDI board. Pay attention, you use a 3.3V version as I do here. For my convenience, I add this switch. It is normally closed. If I push it, it opens and the ESP is off for a moment. And if I release the button, the ESP is powered again and in flash mode. Now I plug my old ESP01 module in this socket and upload the sketch from before. You see, the ESP01 has a 1000 microfarad capacitor across ground and VCC to prevent problems with high currents. In my gateway, I will get the 3.3 volts from the Arduino Mega. So our small ESP is ready. As always, I built a small wiring harness to connect the receiver module and the ESP01 to the Mega. Not very sophisticated this time. As usual, I use this tool for that purpose. If you want to know more, you can watch video number 231. Here is the final diagram. The 433 MHz receiver is connected to pin 16 and 19 of the Mega. Pin 16 is used to switch the power of the module on and off. The ESP8266 is powered by the 3.3V rail of the Mega. I play it safe and add a voltage divider to the TX pin of the Mega. Unofficially, the ESP8266 accepts 5V at its input pins. So these two resistors are not absolutely necessary and you could also connect the TX of the Mega to the RX of the ESP8266. I flashed the small Mega board with the same RF Link software as the bigger one before. If we connect now a power bank to the Mega, the gateway is ready and can be deployed in one of the upper floors of our house. The last step is the display of the values on my PC. As usual, I want to use Node Red for that purpose. Fortunately, Xonskor Varga, I hope I pronounce his name right, already did a similar project. Please do not get shocked now. This is really hard stuff. Are you ready? This is the flow. Not horrifying enough for you? Then I can offer you a look into the code of a few nodes. Now it is really hardcore. At least for me. He needs two full videos for an overview of this flow. At the end, he even writes the data into an SQL database. And you know what? After minor adaptions to my sensors, it works. Great job, Xonscore. Most of this flow is used to aggregate the rain values for an hour, a day or a week. Looking at this flow, I think here we are at the end of node red and I start to understand the importance of time-based databases like InfluxDB. These databases are made to handle aggregations of days, weeks, etc. very well. I promise I will try to show you a similar solution using InfluxDB and Grafana. Then we can decide which one is better or at least more comfortable. But for the moment we have a neatly looking graphical user interface. 
And if you want, you can use the Open Weather Map connector in Node-RED to get the forecast data. And then we could start to compare the forecast with the real weather to check the forecast quality. Because one of my viewers wrote that the forecast is very inaccurate, at least here in the European Alps. Now I have to stop my fantasy and produce the video, otherwise it will not be ready for Sunday morning. Summarized. We built the 433 MHz to MQTT gateway to the specs and it works. This was one of the rare Arduino projects on this channel. Not because I want it, but because the firmware is closed source. Because the Arduino Mega still is very expensive, the gateway costs around $15. And it can be used for all sorts of other sensors. As we see here, where we get the data of six weather sensors of my neighbors. Which is the advantage of having a wireless gateway, which can be positioned high in the house. And we could use these values to calculate the average temperature. Stop dreaming, Andreas, and get the box printed. What will your viewers think if you only show them a naked board? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.